Today we're going to take a look at how you can use SPAD or port mirroring to gain visibility as to what is happening on your network. Now this video we're going to focus on networks which have made up multiple switches at the core. And what I mean by core is within the data center, within the server room, you've got multiple switches and they're usually linked together using fiber. Sometimes referred to as a switch stack. And your servers are directly connected into these switches. You may also have one or more routers connected in and you may have the internal interface of your firewall connected into these switches. So we want to find out in this case as to what is happening on the network, so what users are connecting to, what they're accessing on the internet, and maybe what traffic is going to or, to or from our WAN sites. So the approach we take for something like this is that we would get a LangGuardian system installed, and we would connect what we call sensor ports into one or more switches. Now on this particular network here we've got three core switches, but you may have less or you could have many more. So to get visibility here what we need to trace back is we need to document where our main servers are plugged in. So we just need to find out what switch and what port the main servers are plugged in. We're not interested in tracing back um, uplinks to client switches or distribution switches. The main thing you're looking for is to document where your file sharing servers are connected, database servers, any key servers that you want to monitor. You just need to trace back on which switch they're connected to. You also will need to trace back where your routers are connected to and where your firewall or proxy connection is connected in. So we just need to document that. In some cases what you might want to do is that if, you're, if the box that you've, that you've assigned to the LAN Guardian, if it only has a maybe two or three network interfaces. One interface is used for management and we could plug one in here and we plug one into the second switch. Now we've got servers plugged in in this top switch here which you might want to do is um, get some downtime outside of hours, working hours and maybe just move some of the servers to the to the other switch here so that we've we've got a sense support connected to all the switches that have important servers. Once we've got them plugged in like this, and we've documented what ports we want to monitor, the next thing you want to do is get the documentation for how to set up port mirroring, or sometimes referred to as SPAN. If you've got Cisco switches, it will be referred to as spanning ports. If you've got other types of switches, they, it's sometimes referred to as port mirroring. So if you want to just get the make and model of your switches, and just Google port mirroring or SPAN, and you'll get the documentation. Some switches have a web front end, you just set up what ports are the source and what's the destination. And what we mean by the source and destination, the source is always the, the, the ports that their servers are connected to. So in this case here, this port which is connected back to my servers, this would be a source, this is also a source port, so it's the connection to my router. So they're the source of what we want to monitor. The monitoring port or the destination will be where the sensor is plugged in. So in this, in this small switch here, we'll be looking at what a report number 8 is, is the destination. So when we set up the mirroring on the switch, we set up the source as the server ports and the destination as the LangGuardian sensor port. If you've got Cisco switches or some TreeCon have the same feature, you can also do VLAN monitoring. So what you need to do there is log onto your switch, run show VLAN or equivalent command, and find out what VLAN numbers that your, your servers are connected to. And then when you set up the mirroring or the spanning, we just say we want to monitor VLAN 1 and we want to send it out to this port here, which is the one connecting to the LangGuardian sensor port. So if you can get that set up, you can get very good visibility as to what's happening on your network. And the reason being is if I'm a user out here and I connect into access, let's say the file sharing server, so I come in here on a maybe an uplink to another switch, pass through to the servers, access data, come back out again, and the data is sent back up to the client. Because we have monitoring set up here, we can, we can trace that activity on the network. Likewise, if I'm a user connected here, going through this switch, and I'm accessing some database servers, which maybe exist outside in a WAN connection, so connected to my router here, I've got a, a lot of sites out here in my WAN, so I'm a user here, and I'm connecting out to this remote location, traffic passing through the switch, 
leaving this port here, going out by the router to the WAN, another data coming back in through the port. Because we're monitoring that port, we can also pick it up what traffic is going to and from your WAN connections. And if I'm a user and I'm connected to the internet, maybe accessing some sites and maybe downloading a lot of data, I come through to the core here, go out via the firewall connection or maybe your proxy connection. And again, because we're monitoring this connection here, you can find out what users are doing on the internet. So by just tracing back where your key servers, where your routers and your firewall connections are plugged in, mirror those ports out to a monitoring port here or sensor port, you can find out what is happening on your network. And this approach can be taken not just for LandGuardian, you can use this approach for any type of intrusion detection or any sort of a monitoring system. You don't need to monitor every single port in your network, you just need to pick the ports where the key services are plugged in, set up monitoring, and that's it. It's, it's, not, it's intrusive, we don't interfere in the operation of the network, we take a copy of the packets as they come, in, come in to and from the switches, send them out to the LandGuardian, no client software, no agents, no changes required to servers.